Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the second part, namely the um, unaddressed uh, 20th century objection of physical character. Uh, there are a number of them, by a number of authors. Here, let me start with um, what I consider an important one for the, the entirety of this, uh, for numerous aspects of this lecture, all the way to black holes, as we will see. And essentially deals with uh, the point which I indicated before, namely that Einstein's conception of gravitation as being due to pure curvature, pure geometry, without source, is fundamentally flaws, flawed because it is I I incompatible in an irreconcilable way with quantum electrodynamics and in particular with the electromagnetic origin of the mass. A couple of comments at this, uh, this point. I should remember historically and make a distinction, uh, again, defend Einstein with respect to um, and, uh, and my criticism is on Einstein followers. Einstein, um, uh, coming from, uh, from Germany, he knew that all the houses in, in Europe are made of stone, of marble. And uh, he was uh, one of his first surprise when he landed in America was to see the house were made of wood. So he, he used to compare the left hand side of his equation to a house made of marble and the right hand side of his equation to a house made of wood. What does this mean? It means that Albert Einstein had indeed doubts about uh, the validity of uh, putting this equal to zero. Einstein was Einstein. It, Einstein followers are just poli political manipulator of abusing his name. If Einstein uh, was alive today, this would have been resolved uh, very, 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 very quickly. And not, uh, not so with Einstein followers. So um, this irreconcilable incompatibility was not published in a journal in which Santilli is the editor. No. Uh, or in a journal in which I had friendly editors. No was published at the MIT Annals of Physics following extensive uh, uh, and de uh, extremely detailed um, critical examination by a number of experts. As a matter of fact, in view of, this, um, of the publication of this, uh, of this um, paper, I decided to go to MIT to pay my, my respect and I was there for three years from 74 to 77. Very well. The, let's see the argument very quickly. The, the, well, first let's consider the electron. Quantum, electro, quantum electrodynamics uh, establishes beyond any doubt that the totality of the rest energy of the electron is of purely electromagnetic character. Namely, you have an, uh, an energy momentum tensor and the T00 is equal to 0 0.511 million electron volts, which is which is the rest energy of the electron. So for the electron, there is no doubt whatsoever. Einstein's uh, equation must be complemented with um, uh, on the right hand side with a source tensor as expressed in this, uh, in this, in this equation, which is however first order, first order in magnitude. Again, this is a fundamental point. Now, at this point, um, everybody will say, oh, but, uh, okay, the electron, because it's an isolated charge. But when we have a large mass in which the charge is zero, then the electromagnetic um, uh, con uh, contribution uh, to the mass is, is ignorable because the charges are opposed. In other words, the argument is that since uh, the charge is zero, this means there are an equal number of positive and an equal number of, um, of negative charges and that they annihilate each other so the total electromagnetic charge is uh, or uh, electromagnetic con contribution to the mass is zero. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this again if this is proffered by, by, uh, by uh, an expert, <laughs> that expert is equivocal because even though the charges are opposite, we're talking about matter and the energy is positive, so the energy they add up do not eliminate each other. Uh, we, are we are talking about positive and negative charges, not positive and negative energies that you will need to eliminate the electromagnetic first order source of the gravitational fields for a macroscopic body with null total charge. To prove this point in that long paper, about 50 pages of calculation, <coughs> I assumed that I did the study of the rest energy of the pi zero mes meson which is neutral, as you know, it's composite, necessarily composite, by particle and antiparticle. I call it parton and antiparton to avoid <coughs> the, all, the, all the debates at that time <coughs> pertaining to 
quarks and other, other alternatives. The nature of the particles was, was irrelevant for the calculations. <coughs> was a positive and negative elementary charge in very high ro rotational speed. <coughs> and I calculated by using quantum electrodynamics. First, the contribution from the, from the energy caused by the rotation of the charge, and then from the magnetic moment. All calculations were done by pure uh, quantum mechanical, quantum electrodynamical procedures. This is the Feynman diagram for a parton antiparton structure. This is the, um, the some of the, the calculations of an advanced and retarded um, potentials. And then there are pages uh, and pages of calculations done progressively. First with the first approximation, then with the second approximation, then you are adding all sorts of relativistic correction, and all, uh, all con concluded with the same. Uh, same uh, same re uh, result, namely that the 135 MeV, which is the rest energy of the pi zero, is indeed of entirely electromagnetic origin. So even for the pi zero, that even to the pi zero is neutral, then um, um, the field equation requires a first order source in the right hand side, and cannot be cannot be cannot be. Um, cannot be ignored, which simply cannot be ignored. So the conclusion of the paper uh, are rather serious, because it is, uh, the, we are talking about uh, the, the referee accepted. That's why I respected the MIT in accepting this paper. The, the, uh, because essentially establishing an irreconcilable disagreement between Einstein gravitation and quantum electrodynamics. You have two alternatives, and only two alternatives. Either you accept Einstein gravitation, in this case, you have to uh, rewrite quantum electrodynamics from its foundation. And quantum electrodynamics is one of the most beautiful constructions of human mind of the 20th century with um, experimental verification, invariance, and feature beyond any doubt. Vice versa, if you accept quantum electrodynamics as correct, you have to abandon uh, Einstein gravitation. There is no way out. Now, be careful about this, because the, these implications are extremely deep. We will see in a moment. That uh, the, 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 the singularity, the gravitational collapse as predicted by Schwarzschild, are gone. Because Schwarzschild directly and crucially depends on zero source term. It's a, it's a solution of Einstein field equation, not of the modified field equations. The, um, also, the, in this paper, uh, we made, um, I made a distinction between the gravitational mass and the inertial mass. Gravitational mass is the, is the mass, uh, or energy if you want, more, more appropriately will be the energy equivalence, seen, by the, um, seen in, in the exterior of a body. And, and that is uh, of entirely electromagnetic origin. When we go in the interior problem, then we have additional interactions be besides electromagnetic interaction <coughs> due to short range, uh, whether weak, strong, or other short term forces. And therefore, in this case, um, we have the inertial mass. And um, it, it then follow that the inertial mass is necessarily bigger than electromagnetic mass. Let me put it in a different way. When you are in the, in the exterior problem, you are outside a, a massive body, and you address the real issue, where is the origin of the gra gravitational field, not the description. When you ask what the, where the gravitational field originates, then when you are at a, a large, sufficiently large distance, from, uh, from that body, you only sense interactions that are long range, namely electromagnetic. Then you get the gravitational mass or energy equivalent. When you are in the inside, it's completely different. Then you must necessarily include short range interactions. And, uh, that, um, and so therefore, that is the reason why there are two tensors, two tensors. Incidentally, keep in mind for future comments, the tensor representing the electromagnetic origin of the mass is traceless, as well known, while the other tensor representing the additional short, uh, short range, weak, strong, or other internal interaction, this is, um, the, the, that tensor necessarily has a trace, keep it in mind. Finally, keep in mind that this essentially is, um, uh, 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 initiates what, uh, what is uh, the, the departure from uh, from uh, so-called grand unification. In our unification, you put, try to unify gravitation and electromagnet electromagnetism. This is a the drastic de departure, because basically what you have, you have an identity. You have the identification of gravitation and electromagnetic interaction that was indeed fully achieved in that paper. 
of 1974, published by the MIT Annals of Physics. The, we will address uh, additional aspects uh, later on. The same paper concluded with the proposal of an experimental verification, namely to have this, we call it, electromagnetic head containing uh, opposite charges, like the pi zero, at very high rotation. And, um, and then they see whether they, <coughs> well, the, by measuring the difference of the gravitational fields, where they are stand, uh, when they are at rest at a high rotational, rotational uh, speed, whether we indeed we create a gravitational field. The answer is yes. It is known nowadays that, uh, that um, indeed uh, highly rotating um, charges do create a, a gravitational field. It can be uh, even to extremely weak, of course, but uh, there is a uh, experimental verification of principle. And it, it is done, it can be done by, by a neutron interferometer that has indeed a sufficient sensitivity. I try to propose this experiment to a number of laboratories, but forget about it. The moment they sensed that this Im implied when I presented the paper and they, they, and they, uh, in which the proposal was made, in those famous laboratory, I immediately understood that this will be an invalidation of Einstein gravitation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think that such an experiment could even be considered anywhere in a laboratory, academic or national of the United States of America today, ladies and gentlemen, if you have this expectation, you have problems. You have big problems. It's impossible. Finally, I have to denounce the fact that this paper, written in 1974, that I propagated throughout the personally in copies throughout the entire um, community of gravitation with uh, courtesy letters, in any case having appeared at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is the center of research in, in gravitation, I have to denounce the fact that this paper has remained totally ignore, totally ignore, while continuing to use public funds in, uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 in continuing to use uh, equations that have been proven to be inconsistent without any, at least a, a quotation for human dignity, let alone or decency, let alone for scientific correctness. Not even a quotation to indicate, okay, this is my view, however, careful, because there are these opposing view by Santilli published in a reputable journal. No, in your complaint. Therefore, abusing public funds, something that un unless the United States of America addresses in a, in a very, very sharp and strong way, I'm afraid our beautiful country will decay, decay, and decay. Let's go now to the second uh, uh, unaddressed uh, in your objection of the, um, of the middle of the 20th century, the second part of the 20th century. It stated very bluntly that general relativity is incompatible with special relativity. There are many papers written on this. I just want to give you an idea. Scientists who are serious should have studied papers published in referee journal or in books on the subject. The arguments are, uh, are very clear. First of all, the, the, the so-called total conservation laws of general relativity are incompatible with um, the conservation laws of, uh, of, um, of special relativity. This is a point that's been established, in my opinion, beyond credible doubt by many authors, uh, Ilmas and many other authors. The, um, the second point is that, uh, the, that um, general relativity does not admit a, a consistent and clear limit or approximation, if you want, into sp special relativity. Let's review the scientific process. Um, we went from Galilei relativity to, to, um, to the special relativity with a process that, uh, that is such that uh, special relativity in first approximation recovers uh, uh, Galilei relativity uniquely and unambiguously. But in going from special relativity to general relativity, ladies and gentlemen, this scientific process was truncated. There is no, no unique and unambiguous way to go on. There is no, no way whatsoever that I know to go from, um, from general to special rel relativity. Sure, Minkowski space is in the tangent, is a tangent space. But this is pure mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. I am a physicist, 
and I want to see the, the reduction of the physical law, the total conservation laws from general relativity have to collapse into conservation law of special relativity, which are the generator of the Poincaré symmetry. Finally, the, there is an in, irreconcilable uh, structural difference. Special, um, you see, the Galilei relativity is based on, on, on a symmetry, Galilei symmetry. Special relativity is based on, on a symmetry. Poincaré symmetry, and it is known that the Poincaré symmetry contra contracts uniquely and unambiguously into the Galilei symmetry. That's serious science. Here, no, it's politics, because um, special relativity is based on universal symmetry, the Poincaré symmetry, and general relativity is based on a covariance. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no chance whatsoever that a covariance can be contracted into the Poincaré symmetry. There is a limited manipulation of um, uh, scientific knowledge for money, chairs, prizes, just because of a, a body of corrupt academicians uh, hail me and supports me. There is a limit. This goes beyond. Yes, I have to state that, the state that this view is, it is correct, and even though that's perhaps the very reason, as I remain unaddressed. There are a large number of additional insufficiency or sheer inconsistencies identified uh, in the second part of the 20th century by many, many physicists. I can only quote uh, a few of their names, Ilmaz and Marmet and, and uh, Arpt and so many others. They were talking about hundreds and hundreds, several hundreds of physicists who have expressed their view of the fundamental insuff insufficiency of uh, general relativity. They have all been suppressed, disqualified, discredited, thrown out of the academia, the job has been truncated, it's uh, terminated with manipulation. The uh, act can only be qualified as, uh, as of scientific banditism. It cannot be otherwise. Certainly it is not a scientific process. I recommend <coughs> to interested um, colleagues to go into the Google and do a, a search on the dissident, dissident uh, sciences or criticism of general relativity and you will see many, many of them. Unfortunately, I do not have uh, the time to review them, but they should not be ignored.